Krishan, where your sweatshirt? In my book bag. The school day for 12-year-old Krishan Hickman <laughs> begins just like it does for most other middle schoolers. With a mad rush to get out the door. But when Krishan's mom sees him off, See you later, thank you. he does not board this school bus like his neighbors in Richmond's Creighton Court Public Housing Complex. His course to class is a bit different. During this transition from elementary to middle, I was like, you know, I really don't want him to go to his choice of school. Struggling to make ends meet, Katina Hickman thought her son's only choices for a free education at the time were stark. School report cards from the Virginia Department of Education show only one of Richmond's nine middle schools is fully accredited. Also, six of those nine schools saw their standards of learning test scores drop again this year. It's not that much trouble. So instead, Krishan walks to a school you've probably never heard of. His mom hadn't. I'm just recently finding out that it was a school. Even though it's right across the street from her home. You ready for a big day? Yes, sir. All right, let's do it. It's called Anna Julia Cooper Episcopal School, a small, independent, faith-based school tucked away near Creighton Court, taking its name from a former slave who went on to become a scholar and educator. The school had humble beginnings in this small house four years ago with just 25 students. It was pretty unassuming then, and it's the same way today. So parents generally find out about the school by word of mouth, or if the founder, Mike Maruka, actually goes knocking on doors in the public housing courts to recruit. It's a low-key method he prefers to keep his school from attracting too much attention. You know, transparency to me is important. Um, I think sometimes it can be a distraction and a temptation to take your eye off the ball a little bit and, you know, I don't know, sell yourself, um, wave the flag, um, and we've, you know, very intentionally tried not to do that. AJC, as it's called for short, was developed by Maruka along with several others and placed right here for students like Krishan with limited resources on the city's east end where both poverty and crime rates are high. Seven All 69 of the school's 6th, 7th and 8th graders receive full scholarships to attend because the school is fully funded by private donors and grants. The need here is so overwhelming. Um, I, uh, and what we're doing, and this is very important to me, I, I do not view what we're doing as an alternative. I do not feel like we're competitors. Seven, subtract seven. Instead, Maruka says AJC is just another choice with freedoms most other schools don't have, like smaller class sizes, Father, Lord, prayer in the school's chapel, a longer day, That's it. mandatory summer school, a nurturing environment, which is evident by the school dog. All right, let's multiply. And one-on-one -on -one attention from the many volunteers and teachers. Let's see if she's correct. Like Linton Wade. When I heard all everything that was going on, I was blown away by it, man. Just a tuition-free school, <laughs> tuition-free private school. Like, does, that, does, that, does that even exist? Organize your ideas first. It sounds too good to be true, but Maruka says the school is still trying to make the grade. I hate it when people will point at the city schools, uh, I mean, are all the teachers there and administrators perfect? No, are they all perfect here? No. But what they face when they open the doors every morning is overwhelming. It's an incredible challenge. Maruka tells us they're dealing with the same challenges as RPS, just on a smaller scale, like occasional behavioral issues. We were there when the eighth grade boys had to clean up the cafeteria after misbehaving during lunch. However, Maruka tells us the biggest challenge is in the classroom. While he says they're making significant strides there, almost all of the students come in behind grade level. You're not saying that this is the, the answer. You don't know if this is the solution or not. I take pains to make it clear that we haven't cracked the code, uh, if there is actually a code to crack. All right, what do we need to do? But Maruka says what they do know is it's not just about teaching, but healing. We talk about God. Only three months in as a sixth grader, Krishan's mom has taken notice. He's maturing a lot better than before since going to this school. Um, he looks forward to doing, you know, his assignments more. You know, he just improved in a, in a lot of different ways. 
That, Maruka says, is something immeasurable in what happens after students realize they do have a choice, which consequently leads to hope. I mean, they've seen something different and they've experienced something different and maybe, you know, that prevents them from making a bad choice that they otherwise might have made. Uh, or they, you know, they, they don't become a scholar, but they become a, you know, a, a terrific, decent, contributing member of the community. I mean, that's, my gosh, that's, that's a glorious ending for, you know, for any of us. Two eighth grade classes have already graduated from the school. Maruka says most students get recruited with full scholarships to attend private high schools in Richmond. At this time, he says there are no plans to expand unless they line up more grants and donors. I'm Lorenzo Hall for CBS 6 News.